This is the Wally and Mathot Show, powered by Barhaven Ford. Now here are your hosts, Brent Wallace and Mark Mathot. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Brent Wallace, and he is NHL veteran defenseman Mark Mathot, who's about to have his patience severely tested today as the Wham golf team takes to the links. <laughs> I'm actually really excited for it, but I'm, I'm hearing about all these random changes that are happening to the event. As far as apparently now we're carding, um, Simmer messaged me at like 5 a.m. this morning, uh, obviously from the radio station or from home getting up early for work. But he talked about handicaps and how he's a 20 apparently, and I'm a 12. Uh, and, and, and he's like, he wanted me to ask you, Wally, what you were. So right now, I've got some concerns. Okay, so first of all, people don't know. Uh, uh, we, originally, uh, Sean Simpson uh, from TSN 1200 asked us, along with Ian Mendez to go out and have a round of golf, without, which I thought was a nice leisurely walk, just get to hang out, talk some stuff. Now it's a team event. I don't even know if it's best ball. It's like the Ryder Cup. I yeah. want a cart so I can sit well, in the I've... cart and talk. And apparently that's yeah. not acceptable. But my handicap we... <laughs> is absolutely. That's my handicap. Well, if, if, Simmer's, a, if Simmer's a 20, yeah. and I, like, what are you, do you even know? I, you I don't know my handicap. So, so if Simmer's a 20, but yeah. he's... He's um uh what's the the instructor's name that he was working Kevin with Kevin Yeah, he's cheating. Kevin, yeah, yeah, of course. Sorry. So shout out to Kevin Haim. He's he's <laughs> he's working with Kevin Haim the day before this golf challenge at an apparently a, a 20 handicap. There's a lot of shady stuff happening right now. Yeah. And I've got my reserves. So I feel like you and I need to go out there today, Wally, and really keep an eye on his play and where he's shooting the ball from. Well, I'll be in the woods if you're looking for me. So right, the right. Uh, you, I, I, I can't stress enough how important your game is today. But I don't. Have you played yet? <laughs> no, I haven't swung my sticks since like last yeah. August. So I mean, I'm going to be brutal. But again, we'll see. And and the twelve is what's going to hurt me. But more importantly, I just want to have fun. Uh, well, apparently that's not available today. Competitiveness is out. Or sorry, the fun whole fun idea is out the window as soon as the yeah. first hole starts. So. We'll see. I get I get pretty competitive out there, I, but I do need you because I hate to lose. So if we do yeah, lose, yeah. we're playing another eighteen holes. I'm just telling I you right you. now. Okay. All right. Uh, this, by the way, is episode twenty nine of the Wally Mathot Show, powered by Barhaven Ford. By the way, Barhaven Ford, going ahead, check them out. They have the Roush inspired F one fifties, Mustangs, and Rangers. They are custom built to the way you like to have them done. They are beautiful vehicles. The BFC custom builds at Barhaven Ford. Also, up until Saturday night closing, they have a used car. And a demo clear out sale going on right now. So stop in and see them. Uh, take advantage of all the deals they got going on. 555 Dealership Drive in Barhaven. Okay, Matt, um, a super duper guest on the show today. That's what my son would mm. call it. Uh, we have world champion Connor Brown stopping by for a chat uh, in the Whitewater chat room. By the way, uh, the truck delivery for Whitewater showed up in my house yesterday. It's like seeing Santa's sleigh pull up. It is a beautiful sight. They unload some stuff. Uh, by the way, take advantage of the 15% off coupon wallymanthought.com at shop, sorry, at shopwhitewater.ca. And uh, wait, there's more. I feel like a salesman here. Later in the show, Matt, it's the Sharkalov. We've got a special guest appearance from Russia with love with Igor Sokolov. He's going to stop by and tell us what he's been up to. So all <laughs> that plus a new gong show giveaway game. It is a jam-packed show, so let's get right to it. And that is the headlines right now. Built by BonisherExcavating.com. They're just a call away from your aggregate needs. Topsoil, sand, stone, plus paving and a hydro vac if you need that. And I didn't know this. They rent heavy equipment. So, Meth, we're going to go out, get a dump truck to drive around. Uh, basically, Meth. <laughs> or an excavator. <laughs> yeah. They are basically the Sydney Crosby when it comes to construction. So, I uh, give nice, them a call. 613-432-1120. BonisherExcavating.com. Okay. Headline number one. Cap yeah. issues. Send say no to Buffalo regarding Jack Capuano. Number two, point taken. Braden Point leading the Lightning to a game three win. Seeing red, Jeff Petrie and the Habs look to take a series lead. Tearing a strip off. Ross Stripling apologizes to teammate. I, I want to know if that would have been a big deal to show up a teammate in the NHL, Meth. And then finally, the buddy system. There's a couple of things I want to talk about. But one, which player did you play with that you would take as a buddy on the amazing race? But we'll get to all that in one sec. Let's go right mm. now. Cap issues. So the Buffalo Sabres inquire about Jack Capuano, the associate head coach of the Ottawa Senators. Send say no. Jack's not happy. I don't think he should be either. I, I, I think he has a right to be unhappy. I'll get to that in a sec. Your thoughts on Buffalo saying no. Yeah, and I may not be quite as hard as you are, uh, 
I looked at it over a little bit and, and this is new to me. Like I, I always knew that teams would reach out and that there was sort of an unwritten rule that you would allow your coaches to go at least entertain the offer because other, otherwise it can create some like animosity, right. Um, among yes. the group. And I feel like that to me right now. So before I continue on that point, I think we can all agree that all teams are for the most part, relatively different. Ian Mendez actually wrote a really nice piece on this. And um, for me, I disagree with them, by the way. So go ahead. You do disagree. Okay. Well, yep. okay. Well, I'm not really going to, I don't really have an opinion on the piece itself. I just needed a yep. little more info on it. Cause I wanted to see what was more commonplace around the NHL. And apparently this does happen where teams do like Lamorello, according to Ian's piece had yep. blocked off Colorado from speaking to Kyle Dubas. So my only concern, I'm okay with the team stepping in if they want to protecting what their assets are and coaching staff on a rebuild is very important. But my only concern, I guess, to counter my own point would be what does that create now as far as the mood goes forward going into training camp? But first of all, between the coaching staff, what's going on through Capuano's mind, knowing that he was blocked that opportunity? And then furthermore, how does DJ feel about it all? So it creates a little bit of a weird situation, of course. And to me, that's the only concern I have. Other than that, I'm okay with it if it's team policy. That's a huge concern. It's okay. So when they hired DJ Smith, who was in Toronto and asked to speak to him, it's okay, right? So it's okay yeah. to speak out of both sides of their mouths, apparently. But here's yeah. my problem is that Troy Mann in Belleville is without a contract right now. And yep. the NHL, as in DJ Smith and the entire coaching staff, is coming up for renegotiation. DJ Smith and that coaching staff does not want to go into this season without a contract under their belt because if they struggle to get off to a bad start or they right. don't make the playoffs, they're out the door and then they're looking for work. So, and that includes Jack Capuano, who now has a chance to get back into being an NHL head coach. This, by the way, just because we keep saying, oh, it's policy and we know of a few examples that have been set because they say, oh, they tried to talk to him and it didn't happen. There are countless other incidents where the assistant coach gets allowed to speak before he gets hired by another team. This is common practice. It happens in the NFL, it happens in the CFL and in baseball and well, in and basketball. I don't yeah, understand I why they, why are you blocking somebody? If you already have your head coach, you can find assistant coaches. They're not like scarce. You can find quality NHL assistant coaches all the time. I'm, yeah. I, I'm, so one DJ Smith. So if they if they say no to Jack Capuano going somewhere, does that mean if DJ struggles, Jack, you're going to be the head coach? Well, now how does problem. how does DJ Smith feel? Yeah. So this and that, creates an, a huge firestorm in and around this team. And don't forget, this is the same organization that wouldn't pay the coaches, and they had to go to the NHL to get their pay reinstated when they wanted to cut it back to fifty percent during uh, COVID at the beginning of last year. So there is. You can say there's no animosity because it hasn't come out. I don't think the Ottawa Senator coaching staff is very thrilled with the way they've been treated. Fair enough. I will. I don't need to elaborate any further. I think you uh, you said a lot there, Wally. And good. <laughs> and, and, and no, but but really, really good points. And again, for me, just like you mentioned, it's concern as far as where they're mentally at going into camp. So is DJ really offended now? It just it's just I feel like you just have to allow the coach to go and do it because otherwise you're creating a shit storm. It's as simple as that. I, yeah. I, I you know, anyway. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, it leads perfectly into our next headline point taken. Uh, Braden point basically scoring while being knocked down last night helps the Tampa Bay lightning do a two one win. And now a two one series lead. It seems to be right now that either, by the way, I'll, I'll get into Braden point in a sec, but Tampa has got its stars playing and they're scoring yeah. when need be, which is what you need in the playoffs. And so, I'm concerned because they're my Islanders and I'm not going to, I'm not leaving this ship here, but I need them to step up. I thought they played a pretty good game. They just couldn't they generate did. Uh, anything past Vasilevsky. Yeah. And, and for me, well, first of all, Vasilevsky's playing terrific. And if you want to win, as we all know now in the NHL playoffs, particularly this season, I mean, goaltending is literally your most important piece and he's delivering first star of the game played fantastic. But more importantly for me, I like the adjustment that Tampa made. They, they just showed us that they can play any way you want. Yeah. And they've reinforced it with the way they played in their last game in that they can defend now. We know they can defend. It was never really in question, right? But they're known for their high-powered offense. And so when they can show that they can play that way, a disciplined game and lock everything down when they need to, for me, 
Um, that just goes to show how deadly they can be uh, in, in this playoff this year and, and as a team over the last couple seasons, of course. So I love the game. I love the way they played. It would have been nice to see the Islanders win only because they're playing at home in the Coliseum. The fans are insane. Like you watch those yeah. intros, they're all on their feet. The Coliseum is banging. It's so loud that you're almost kind of caught cheering for them a little bit. You, you view them as the underdog. You can't help but want them to win. Yeah. But I just love the way Tampa played. I mean, I, for me, forget about all the numbers. They just, they played a very sound defensive game for the most part. And they're still like, they're still going to get their offensive opportunities as well. So again, it's, it's, it's their series to lose as we discussed prior. I know you put your money on, on the Islanders right now, Wally. I still think you're doing it to be different, but I do admire the move that you made anyway, <laughs> but it's Tampa's series to lose. But I'm it, okay. I, I'm with you that I think that Tampa is a better team, but I, in my heart am cheering for the Islanders. And in fact, sure. So last night I'm on I'm on the sports interaction website and I'm looking up different stuff to whatever for today's show. There is a you can bet on Jean Gabriel Pajot getting a point or not. I was like, damn, I think why wouldn't you bet? I think he gets a point. So I bet uh, five bucks. I would have won twenty. And this is like I feel like I got robbed. I you donated sure, five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure he was going to get a point last night. I'm not, yeah. Anyway. I should have bet on Braden Point because that guy now leads the NHL with 11 playoff goals. He's a game player, goal. man. He's a gamer. I, does he fly under that radar because of all the guys they have? Uh, like, not anymore. Would, do you, not anymore. Okay, if you have a chance to take anybody, I want to say, except Kucherov off that lineup. Well, uh, I guess you'd take, I think you'd take Hedman too. I, 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 I would take the Norris Trophy winner, Victor yeah, Hedman, for yeah. sure. <laughs> but, but, like, but, but point, no, no, but, but point taken. I mean, I, he's a star. I agree. Yeah, he's, he's just, and he's, I feel like he's such a complimentary type of player too, because he, he's such a hard worker. Yeah. He's not just lurking around, you know, looking for that pass. Like he creates his own opportunities, almost kind of like pager in many ways, but yeah. maybe more polished and um, just, just a hard worker. And he's excelling on that team because he's got so much talent around him. Right. So that it's literally a perfect match for both sides. I'm a huge fan of his works really hard. I admire that. Uh, you brought up the Coliseum. So I forget what year it was. I apologize. The Sens are playing the Islanders in the playoffs. It's in Long Island. And we're there at the Coliseum. And it, you said it's rocking. And they have in the press box not enough room to keep everybody. So yeah. I have to climb over a railing, under uh, a steel girder. And then I sit in my seat, which is like a school seat where you have that little wood desk that sure. you pop up. And and I'm so I'm jammed in there. And all of a sudden, I look and like the entire... Uh, arena football league cheerleader group is sitting next to me and I can't oh, see nice. anything. There's a light <laughs> in my back. And the best part I'll always remember about the Islanders back in that day is they were always known to be really cheap. You had to pay a dollar, I think, to get a RC Cola out of the vending machine or out of the, the machine in the press box to get a drink. That's like ludicrous. They, they, Unacceptable. Did not, they did not want to give up anything in that building. Anyway, uh, yeah. I love, I loved it there. Cause they, uh, it was, I mean, the Coliseum was a great time just to sit and watch if you can. Uh, Moving on then, seeing red, I, it looks completely uncomfortable, and I know it's not, but Jeff Petrie's eyes were out of this world in game two. Like, my eyes wanted to water. It was great. And, and it wasn't just that. It was the memes that were popping up on oh, yeah. Twitter and in social media. Like, people were having a field day with it. So uh, I, I really enjoyed it. It was bizarre, though. Like, I've, I've had, like, I've popped blood vessels in my eyes before, and I know you don't, you don't feel it. It just looks bizarre when you're trying to have a conversation with somebody, but you actually don't have any discomfort whatsoever as a player when you're dealing with it. But in any case, really cool. It made for a lot of funny <laughs> jokes online, garnered a lot of attention. Um, but more importantly, I don't know if you were going to team me up on that Wally, but I'll jump right into it with Petrie and his play. I mean, look what it does to that team. And, and that that's reinforced yeah. my point from day one, when you lose a top four D man, uh, and, and of course, Petrie's a top two on that team and, and arguably their best. Uh, but when you lose a guy that eats up 20 plus minutes a night with all the responsibility that he has, I think he's proven now, you know, what he brings to this lineup. He comes in basically with one hand and you can you just know he's playing through a ton of discomfort, but he finds a way to battle through it, has a fantastic night. The team feeds off of that and they get the win. So, I mean, I think that brings new life into this lineup. And I think if you're a Montreal fan, you're kind of your mind's a little a little more at ease now moving into that next game. Okay, I'll throw this out there. Is Vegas on its heels now because of the game two, or is it just back to another game? Three? No, like I it's, don't. It's just nothing. I, I think it's I think it's fair game at this point. You know, I, I really do. And but but 
to Montreal's credit, they get to go back into the Bell Centre now. They go back to Montreal. They're going to be reinvigorated, playing in their own building. Uh, It's on the weekend, so the city's going to be buzzing. I mean, Montreal is going to be absolutely buzzing. The patios are going to be busy. Uh, all our all our favorite fans out there, including that gentleman that I keep posting on Twitter, will be out there <laughs> talking about the game. But but as a player, you feed off of that. I know this. You know, even with Ottawa, knowing that you've got your you're in your home city. We're in the playoffs. You've got the the Red Mile on Elgin Street, if you will, and all the fans are are ecstatic about the hockey. There's a buzz around the city. You feed off of that that energy for sure. I I don't know, Wally. Did they announce? that they were going to let more people into the building. Like, is there another perhaps, thousand or something? Yeah. I think so. Something like that, which, which, which kind of sucks. I think to a degree, I mean, it's, it's great. You're going to take what you can get, yeah. but I think if you're Montreal, you're coming from Vegas oh, yeah. in a packed house that looks like a Cirque du Soleil show. But, but in any case, it doesn't matter because Montreal is a historic town when it comes to hockey, they're going to be feeding off of that. They're going to have a couple guests. I'm sure in the building watching as well, perhaps some hall of famers, hopefully, uh, but I, I do feel like it's the, the series right now is very much up for grabs. I think Montreal has proven now that they, they belong, they can hang in there with them, and that's really exciting. So that, that's some good news if you're a Montreal fan. You're going to have to get that guy to update his Twitter or whatever it is to say 3,500 <laughs> is going to feel like, or 25,000, yeah. right? Should, so. should we get him on the show, Wally? Like, I feel like there's an opportunity should- there. But we I'm should, worried. I, I don't know what he's going to say. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up to you. So if you bring him on, okay. it's all on you. Oh, uh, I'm following him. I'm following him on Twitter. Yeah, I, no, I know your BFFs. Um, uh, anyway. okay, move, moving on to number four, tearing a strip off. I don't. So Blue Jay pitcher Ross Stripling apologizes to teammate uh, after he goes after him on the field. And, and credit to Ross Stripling. He came out and owned it and apologized. And you can tell he actually meant it. And he said, you know, right. huge mistake on my part. I can remember seeing stuff go on in the on the in the nhl on the ice and not thinking anything of it like is this a bigger deal than we make it out to well me? yeah so so yeah so you're of course talking about the jays game when they're playing the yankees and there's a carlos stanton hits a ground ball to panic on third yeah. and panic kind of duffs his, his his throw to first right and you can see um uh pitchers Triple. visibly ang- yeah and he's and he's visibly angry and he's i didn't think it was that bad like i watched it a couple times and he's kind of, you know, he's he's embellishing his movements a little bit. And, yep. and and that's always not a good look, especially when you're directing it towards a teammate. All the fans can see that you're voicing your displeasure and you're you're moving your arms around. It's a little dramatic. But he immediately took it back after the game and acknowledged what he did. He was very apologetic, which I appreciated. Yep. So I'm assuming in the room it's completely squashed and they don't care. So I don't know that you can make a big deal out of it anymore at this point other than – in the moment, and it applies to the NHL, I can still remember at times playing with Eric. Eric is so competitive with Carlson, of course, I'm speaking about. And there's times on the ice where he was, you know, a little passionate and trying to tell me something. And I, I would always try to downplay it because it's Eric Carlson. So, you know, the cameras are going to be on him. And I know I've got the, the, the frame of mind to understand that there's a good chance they're going to get it on camera. So I'd always tell him, like, you know, not effing now. Like, do it at the bench. Let's talk about it at the bench. And so he'd come to the bench, of course, and he would voice his displeasure to me. And I didn't always like it. And I would bark back at him. But that's just that's just the way it is when you're in that kind of environment. It's heated. You're playing this barbaric contact sport. You're going to get an, an FU match with your teammates sometimes. Yep. And sometimes it gets caught on camera. My, uh, my philosophy was always handle it in the room because you don't want the cameras to get a hold of it. It's not a good look. People can use it as a storyline. I wasn't a fan of it, but I did like the way he handled it last night in the in the Jays game in that he squashed it after, called himself out in the media. I'm sure he addressed it in the room. Not an issue anymore. I I just curious about the NHL level because you can see guys skating back to the bench. I know mm-hmm. Eric, and there was a I think a Derek Broussard incident in the playoffs in 2017. There's you see I hate so calling just, them incidents. They're not incidents. Right. You know, well, like that's they are the thing. to us because we probably don't exactly. see them all the time. Exactly. Yeah. We're, we're just having an argument. It's like having an argument with your coworker at work, except we're allowed to throw F-bombs and hit each other. So, so, you know, it's a little different. But when you grow up in that environment, you're so used to it. Right. So if I ever get in an argument with somebody off the ice, I'm, bar- I'm rarely phased by it because I'm so used to working <laughs> in that very hostile environment where a lot yeah. more is acceptable. So it's part of the game. Uh, usually you handle it in-house. And it doesn't get out because you were a prime example just there, Wally. You're like, you called it an incident. Whereas we would downplay it incredibly right in the moment. That's the difference. But again, it's it's just the way it's part of the game. 
I, I can I can attest to arguing with you is not a whole lot of fun because it just rolls. No, off I mean, back. but yeah. but but we get over it, right? Like oh, absolutely, you, hand, yeah. you handle it and then you move forward. We don't hold a, it against each other twenty four hours later. And if you don't play well today, there's going to be a lot of arguing. Um, okay, moving on to number five, the buddy system. Now, before I get to which player would you like to do the amazing race with, I want to talk about this warm up video from North Macedonia in in soccer at the Euro 2021. It is, well, I don't know how to explain it, but basically people have to go, people will have to, people will have to pause this really quickly and Google it, but it, all you have to type is North Macedonia warm up. And Wally explain to the viewers and listeners okay. what they do. So they have uh, highway cones, if you will, upside down and two soccer balls. So they run in a pair and they get to another spot and then they have to throw the balls up in the air and catch them with their cones and then run back. And then the next group goes. It is a relay race in a warm up for one of the biggest soccer events in the world. I couldn't, yeah. I can't fathom this. They look like a bunch of clowns. And listen, I'm all about the off ice stuff or the off the off pitch stuff or anything that kind of garners a little of attention. Like when you watch rugby and you see them perform the haka out of New Zealand or whatever, like those sort of traditional stuff. That's that I can get behind because it's cool. Yeah, but when you're seeing a bunch of these guys, level. they look like a bunch of donkeys going back and forth, passing a ball with a pylon. Like oh, it just, so awesome. it looked, it looked so incredibly unprofessional and childish, like a bunch of elementary kids like me, like a young Mark Mathot in elementary school <laughs> playing with pylons in gym class. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, you got to look it up. It's pretty ridiculous looking. I don't know what they're doing. I can understand it if it's traditional for them, but even then. They look like kids. Yeah. This ha this has like you and I. I think we should do this video. I I'll get back to you on this. Um, <sighs> no, thank finally, you. okay. So I was sitting there thinking the other about we're going out golfing. Like, what a great team we are, and how sure. we would get along for everything. So, and then I was thinking we should do the amazing <laughs> race together. <laughs> then I, I feel like I get along better with Craig on the golf course. But anyway, continue. You know what? I'm I bring passion, fire, and energy. I think that's and some <sighs> entertainment. So, Those are a lot of buzzwords, man. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been working on that line for a while now. So yeah, I can tell. Is is um, which teammate that you played with uh, would you take on the amazing race as your partner? Wow, teammate. Okay, well, my initial instinct would be to bring my brother, only because we're in sync with a lot of stuff. We seem to get along really well. We're like best buds. But to this day, I'm very lucky to have a great younger brother. But yeah. if I had to pick a player. Yeah. It would be probably Derek Broussard only because I'm really like, I love Eric too. Eric's Eric's a good dude, but I, I feel like he'd yell at me a lot. Yeah. If I didn't do something according to the way he wanted it done. Yeah. Um, so I'd have to go with brass because he and I have that comfort level. We play together a ton in Columbus, even in Syracuse and in Ottawa, we go way back. He was in my wedding party. So I feel like I could really lay into him if I had to with an argument and he would be able to get over it. So I'll say, I'll say brass. Okay. Are either one of you any good with directions? Because I don't get the sense that you are. Uh, no, I am. I am. I'm actually very good. I, at least I think I am pretty good with directions, <laughs> but I'm also very like anal retentive. I've got yeah. like, I'm very OCD when it comes to being prepared, being punctual as far as where I'm going when I'm driving and whatnot. So I have to say, Derek's very <laughs> casual. When we were, I know you'll have some kind of rebuttal here, Wally, but, <laughs> but, but when we would play and I was playing with Eric, Eric was always the guy that I had to wait on in the lobby on the road when we were going for dinner. I'd say six o'clock lobby. Yeah. We're going to go for dinner, you know, nice steakhouse or wherever we're going. I'd be there five minutes before, because if you're not early, you're late. That was always my philosophy, right? Eric, I always had to wait on, I'd have to call him and he knew what he was doing. Right. And I could just see it. He's probably laying up there on the bed, watching TV in his boxers, then looking down and going, Oh boy, I better get ready now. And he's late. And I'd have to wait on him. He was always that guy. And he's always the guy they would like have to order like the extra dessert to go. And I'd end up having to split that part of the bill with them at some point, all his little things drove me nuts. But despite all of that, I love the guy. So we'll leave it at that. Well, I wouldn't take Carlson only because of his bear video. I don't think he listens and plays by the rules properly. If you're going to try and zigzag away from a bear, I'm concerned to what else he might Buddy. try to do. And, and when we, and so when I, I got my hunting license last year, I had to watch this instructional video on like a, a, a like a blind up in the tree with yeah. bears around you and again on this bear topic i've never seen an animal move as fast as a bear in the woods like i can't stress this i'm going back to this bear topic <laughs> these guys can cook 
So if you think you can zigzag away from a bear in the woods, <laughs> I'm sorry, but these, these sons of guns have four legs and they grow up in this environment. They yeah. move like nothing I've ever seen. So again, Eric has no clue when it comes to wildlife <laughs> and what they're capable of in their own domain in the wilderness. Uh, that's fair. I, 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 I will say if, if you were going to ask me who I take and you probably weren't, um, my amazing race partner I was thinking of the other day, would I take Mendez? He's pretty smart. I don't think he's yeah, very go athletic. So, so then, <laughs> yeah, but like, he's got frosted tips now. Yeah. I feel like that's, I feel like at that point they're like reflective at nighttime and it would literally distract you and it would lose that, that camouflage that you're looking for away from all the, uh, you know, the nighttime attacks like, like coyotes. <laughs> okay. All right. The amazing race isn't a hunting expedition. Anyway. Um, uh, fair enough. Yeah. The, <laughs> then I thought, uh, Terry Markov, but he's he's too old and not very agile. So then, oh, you can't say that about Terry. Oh, yeah. oh he is a legend. Can you? So I don't know. I I decided. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then Haley Wickenheiser, she's a doctor. She's athletic. She's way smarter than anybody I probably know. So I thought well, that's a good call. But I ultimately went with Kyle Bukowski, Bucky. He's very okay. athletic. He's good looking. He can charm anybody. So I was just yeah, going to take him. Kyle's the tough. Young guy. Because his he's got like if his hair is imperfect all the yeah. time, I feel like uh, that would really rattle him mentally, and that would affect him and his performance in the wilderness, good, in the woods. Good, I would go with Craig. Craig, the, our producer, Craig, at, plays Warzone. He's tactical. He's a good communicator. He would be my next pick after Brass. I think. Okay, just so we're clear, the Amazing Race is done in an urban environment in major cities. It is not a hunting show. <laughs> I'm thinking of that show. Man tracker, you know, there's remember oh, man tracker oh, yes. where that, yeah, you got that, you got that, that guy that on guy. the horse, and you got like yes. a head start with a partner. I like, I think Shane Doan actually did the show, yes, he um, did. uh, and I, I believe, and I believe he won, he actually managed. And I never still remember watching him hightailing it up and down these mountains. Like, if you're in pretty good shape, I think you can get away from it anyway. That shows he's really good at what he does, obviously. That shows crazy, um, yeah, he's good, yeah, all right, uh. <laughs> I don't know what going to leave. We're, it we're way off. Tracker. We're way off base. Here. <laughs> yeah. I, anyway, uh, I don't know what else to say other than those are the headlines built by Bonisher excavating, uh, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley Bonisher excavating.com. Okay. Time for a quick break. When we come back, Connor Brown interview in the whitewater chat room brought to you by whitewaterbeer.ca. Use the 15% off coupon code. Also don't forget they do delivery shop whitewater.ca. Uh, you are watching the Wally Mathot show powered by Barhaven Ford, Barhaven Ford celebrating their one year anniversary this month. And they want to celebrate with you giving away $2,000 in incentives as a gratitude gift on their anniversary special. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to the Wally Mathot show powered by Barhaven Ford, Barhaven Ford, Ottawa's largest inventory of new and used vehicles. Also, just a reminder of their demo and used car clear up going on right now until Saturday of closing. Great selection of used luxury vehicles. And by the way, they've got Mustangs and F-150s in that sale. Uh, start the car and head over to 555 Dealership Drive in Barhaven. Barhaven Ford, tell them Meth sent you. All right, welcome back. And joining us now in the Whitewater chat is gold medal world champion winning Connor Brown. Uh, Brownie, nice to see you, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me on. How does it feel to be a world champion? Unreal. Honestly, it was, uh, that was a crazy game, crazy experience, highs and lows, bit of a grind in the hotel for a couple of weeks, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I just made it. That win was unreal. I hadn't played meaningful hockey in a couple of years. So it was, uh, it was fun to not only play some meaningful hockey, but be a big part of wins and, and losses. And so it was, it was a lot of fun over there. I saw like we talked to Nick Paul when you guys went 0-3. And, and so I didn't want to bring up a lot about the world championship. So when you guys are 0-3 and, and you need, is it Latvia to lose to Germany? Like what is going through your mind as being the first Canadian team never to make it to the playoffs? Yeah, it was like at one point it was almost like we were like embarrassed. Like we were like we wanted like we just knew that we were we were just like oh just puck wouldn't go in. We were playing yeah. three first three games. We had, we had one goal our whole, like we just couldn't score. We were out playing teams. We just couldn't score. And then um, we started getting some bounces and they started going in for us. And uh, we knew we had like, you know, we had a, a team that could compete against any of the teams in the tournament. And um, we just weren't getting the bounces at the beginning of the tourney there. So it was nice for it to turn around. And Brownie, what about the change with, because obviously, so you guys are 0-3, then you guys bring in Andrew Mangiapane and things just 
kind of start to settle, especially on your top line. Like you guys were incredible and I had the pleasure of covering it. So I got to see the change. What happened there? Why did that just work out so well for everybody? Yeah, that was massive. I think, um, I think playing with Manja, I felt like we kind of uh, thought the same a little bit out there. Like I uh, wanted to spread the zone out, wanted to keep possession, um, yeah. you know, uh, not as, not exactly North South. Cause I mean, North South over there, the ice is so big. You just can't, you don't really want to give it away. It's a little harder to give it, get it back other than North America yeah. where you can chip it in and check it back easier. Um, but, you know, we started just kind of playing possession, uh, holding on to pucks, spreading the zone. And, and then we just started getting good looks, good looks. And obviously he was a great finisher too. So that helped a lot. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, is Gerard Gallant, talking to you guys much through this 0-3 and I know because you guys didn't have any exhibition games and I think you I don't even know how many practices you had maybe three is yeah. there was there much chat about how you guys have started I mean you know he he was he was just trying to take the pressure off making sure we were loose and having fun and, and not getting uh caught up too much in the 0-3 start and just kind of you know stand in the moment you know we, we knew that we just we needed to just relax and especially in the scoring areas we just needed to relax make a little move and, and put the puck away that was the difference and then once we started doing that we started getting wins so you have you lose to finland in a shootout and then you have to wait for that germany uh, latvia game are you guys did you guys watch that game <laughs> or did you just wait till you found out later I, I, i'm just curious of what that day was like well it's miserable we were, we were having beers with the British team. So we're in the afternoon. We weren't, we weren't exactly sure if we we're going to have to fly out the next day or, or if we we're going to move on. And either way, we we're having beers with the British team and we we're kind of checking in on the scores. And then once the third period went on, we all went and watched it and we were just praying for no OT. It was weird to cheer for a game, like not to go to overtime. Didn't matter who won. We just didn't need it to go to OT. And so, uh, you know, and then we got through, we knew we had to play the Russians. We didn't exactly take the easy way. You know, we'd play Russia, U S <laughs> Finland, but it was, um, it was a roller coaster, roller coaster so, of a tournament. Uh, and by the way, I drank one night with the, the British team. They are by far the best team to hang out with. Would you agree? Oh, they're hilarious. Yeah. The, these guys were, these guys were all time. They had us cracking up. <laughs> they are enjoyable. Um, there is. So which one of the two teams you beat the Russians, then you had to beat the Americans and with, you know, Wides and with Christian Milanin and Jack Campuano as the head coach, which one did you savor more? Um, definitely the one against U.S. I mean, just against Cappy. And we, uh, our, our video coach is uh, King. We call him Kinger. We call him Donger, actually. And so DJ was texting me and Polly before the game and Kinger, and he was saying, this is a dong bowl. Big, so we won the dong bowl. So we got bragging <laughs> rights over Donger all year next year, and we'll be letting them know pretty much every day. <laughs> Brody, what, was, what was the setup like because I've, I've got the pleasure to play over there a few times and Canada don't, does it always does a really good job obviously you guys have a really good setup a nice lounge was was it weird or different this year with the pandemic like were you guys still able to get out a little bit or were you just stuck in the hotel the whole time yeah we, were, we we had like three outings I think they had this uh tent set up off site so I mean we we're there for four weeks and only kind of we we're able to go out three times and then it was just a very like remote isolated uh dinner for us but we couldn't even go for a walk like it was kind of a, it was a grind honestly we, yeah. we just we was a lot of seven up being played in the card room and that was about <laughs> it like that uh, that would explain the the, the slow start then right because you guys yeah. didn't really have like a like a pre-camp like where you go up but you have a bunch of nights where you go out with the boys and beer no and that, like quick yeah. chemistry you, you couldn't do that no we 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 were bonding on the plane over um, yeah. playing some cards in the plane over, had a couple beers and then we got in there and we had to isolate for two days in our hotel room. You know, it was some of the, most of the boys had single beds. So, so it was a bit of a shock. <laughs> it was a bit of a shock when you got over there, but, um, yeah. you know, it was obviously all the way worth it, but it was, uh, it was, we, you didn't, we didn't really know what we were getting into. We didn't know, you know, we knew that it was going to be a bubble, but we didn't know the strictness. We didn't know, I mean, it was it was as tight as it gets pretty much so um you know <laughs> it, it, you know if, if we were to get bounced in the uh after the round robin with the not being able to leave the hotel rooms it would have been a sad couple weeks <laughs> did you fly over with the americans yeah and back yeah. and so i guess was it just a bunch of guys hanging out or was there did you keep to yourselves 
Well, we kind of just kept like we were just talking to the Canadians, and then they were kind of hanging. We kind of we were playing cards on our side, and they were had a little card game going, and a lot of guys just sleeping. But um, we, I mean, you, a lot of guys know each other because they played with this right. guy or that guy. But uh, so it wasn't too hostile. How was the flight back then? A lot of sleeping. Uh, I don't know. I don't think we slept before we got on the plane on the way back. So I think pretty much just everyone just went to sleep the whole way. We're going to get to that post-game celebration in a second. I want to know, um, you're in the gold medal game. What is it with you? And, and I know you played with Nick Paul all season long for the most part, but what's it like with the way that two of you found chemistry? Of the nine goals scored in the medal rounds, you or Nick were part of eight of them. Yeah. Um, I think Paulie's such a good player. Uh, like, I just love playing with him. Like, I, the only time I really get to play with him is on the penalty kill. And – we I, like, you know, at the end of the year, I think I had like five shorties and last like, and it was a lot of it just to do with him. He makes so many great steals. And uh, then we've been working on our two on ones a lot together in practice. Cause we knew, cause you know, I feel like we both steal pucks pretty well. So we knew we were going to get a, get a lot of two on ones. And so um, we've done a lot of two on ones on our, we know we like to get our two on ones on our offsides, like things like that, where we um, have just kind of started to develop some chemistry, but um I think that he's just going to get better and better in the league. Uh, you know, when he, when his confidence grows and, you know, he makes more and more plays, but he's just so big, smart, headsy player. Um, I just, he, he's just getting better and better. Did you want to shoot that puck on the game winning goal or did you? Yeah, want I wanted it? the glory, but he threw me a burger in my feet. So <laughs> I had to just slide her back to him. Not much choice on that one. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, did he mean to lose that face off? On that play, I don't know. Down the I, ice? I, I doubt it, but he made a nice play jumping that thing because that, that that guy only had one choice to go back to the D man, uh, and, he, yeah. and he made a nice play jumping it. He makes steals like that all the time, though. I think like our first shift, like you know, you know what it's like on three on three. If you don't get it at the beginning, it's like you could just spend the whole shift just trying, you know, just containing everyone to the outside. But he just he stole it back a couple times for us, which is just such a yeah. He's he's. Really, I mean, he's one of the best in the league at stealing pucks, and he's just so big, rangy, and smart. So uh, he did that a couple times in our other three-on-three when we played Finland, and we almost buried um, in the end of the round robin there. So uh, the get the goal goes in. I, do you ha- can you, I guess, take us through that moment, or is it just almost a blackout kind of moment? Like, what is going through your mind? No, I remember. Uh, I remember the whole play pretty vividly. I remember I wanted him to give me the puck uh, at the, at our own blue line. And then he held on to it. And then the guy, ju- so I remember the whole thing. And I just, when I, when it went to my feet and back across that little, that little half second felt like 10 seconds. I remember. And then after that, I blacked out. I don't remember really my, remember much about the celly other than <laughs> jumping up, jumping up and down. And then Polly spin moving me out, trying to get away. He just wanted all the glory, bring it off the bench. <laughs> <laughs> so is there a greater feeling or a greater sight than a yard sale on the ice after a no, championship game? No, no, I, I don't think I've had a yard sale since Bantam OHF. So it was, it was pretty unreal. Uh, it's been a while. So, I mean, those, those are far and few between. I mean, especially you get older and you play pro so many teams in the league, everyone's so competitive. It's um, to be able to win a championship is, is just, there's nothing like it. It's so fun. That's your, and that's your first time representing Canada and Meth and I have covered and we've gone and he's played at world championships and I've covered them. It is a phenomenal tournament that doesn't obviously get the attention because of the playoffs over in North America, your first experience, obviously you're world champion, but what's your first experience like playing in that environment? It was, it was uh, different. I mean, I, it's, I, it was surprising how many good European players there are, you know, you hear, like it's, especially those, a lot of those Finnish guys and those, uh, you know, even the like guys from Kazakhstan and Latvia, like, you know, there's, there's impressive players over there and uh, the depth of players is, is eye opening. Um, you know, it, it was, it was, I think a lot of guys, you know, you come from the NHL and you think that it's going to be a little easier, but it's a totally different game over there with the big ice and um, mm-hmm. to be able to, you got to really craft, you know, craft your way into getting scoring chances. It's almost harder to score um just because all the ice is like out away from the net so like you kind of can get lulled into playing on the outside if you're not attacking the middle but it was eye-opening it was fun tournament and very competitive especially playing that latvian team at the very first game i mean i felt like we did deserve to win that game we outplayed them but um 
you know, I just very deep, good team. A lot of, a lot of older, really good players that have been uh, playing pro for a long time. Yeah. The only thing that I think you guys were robbed of would have been the fans, right? Like the unique season yeah. and not having that like crazy European vibe in there where everyone's standing up and chanting the whole game. Wally, like when you're, yeah. when you're oh, there and you're around that atmosphere, it's incredible. So would you go back if they asked you next year, obviously you don't want to, you want to play in the playoffs with the senators, but yeah. let's assume the worst, would you go back? Yeah, I'd go back. You know, I, I don't know about maybe next year or, you know, maybe, maybe, in a, I don't know. It depends on, on uh, so many yeah. different things, but I would love to go back and uh, even, I would love to even go back and, um, you know, bring my, my fiance or my mom and dad, if they wanted to come yeah. over, you know, I know that they yeah, do, a, that's they do fun. a great job uh, with families. And so I think that would be a fun experience too, to, to go experience that. But um, yeah, it, it would be awesome to go back. Okay, so what did you do after all the cameras were turned off at the and how the team celebrate? Well, we just had uh, we were having beers and champagne in the room, and then we just we lit, we got a we had to stay in the hotel uh, um, because we we're flying out the next morning, and we did, and we were still in a bubble because we wanted to charge it back and everything, and so we they just rented out a uh, they had like this big sky uh, the sky bar it was pretty much the restaurant on the top floor of the Radisson. And we just had that and we just watched the sun come up. It was pretty unreal. Uh, yeah. you, were, you were joined by uh, like Jacob Bernard Docker, Nick Paul, and you were as the players. Then you had Dom Nicoletto, who's your athletic trainer, and John Forget, your equipment guy, Alex Manzi, another equipment guy, and Dr. Tim Cregan all over there. Did it, was there a comfort factor in the, all seven of you being there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially when you're you know, around a group of guys that you're just meeting. Um, yeah. To know a bunch of familiar faces to just kind of so you can relax and be yourself is uh it was it made the whole experience and transition a lot easier it was it it was great and it was obviously fun to win with those guys too you know and there's no one really watching this so i'm going to ask this question did you get hooped out of the mvp award i mean you're the tournament leading scorer <laughs> and well, somehow think... mangiapani is the now the tournament mvp you well, know, I mean, it's tough to argue. I mean, we were zero three, and then Mange got there. I think he scored every, every pretty much every game, and uh, so it's tough to argue that one. He was uh, <laughs> he was pretty valuable for us. You are though. I mean, you had fourteen assists, which I think you had all season in Ottawa. What, was there anything that clicked for you differently, or did it just continue to carry over with the confidence? Yeah, I think it carried over with the confidence. I mean, um, primarily in my career, I've been a passer, and I. Uh, you know, playing on the half wall in the power play, um, you know, I've never really had a chance to run it like, you know, the second unit, yeah. obviously, but it, it was nice to be able to run that first unit and just kind of, uh, I thought, you know, as the tournament got, went on, I got more and more comfortable in the half wall and uh, be able to make plays and kind of, you know, see what works and stuff. And um, so that, that whole side of it was a lot of fun to kind of be that guy again. Uh, having been, you know, I think second half of the year, I, I was uh, relied upon more and more offensively and, um, you know, it's been nice to, to expand that part of my game and kind of, uh, you know, I, I realized that I'm a good defensive player and that's just going to take care of myself, take care of itself. And so just kind of expand my offense has been uh, this last half of the year has been a lot of fun. I mean, it's, it's, it's fun when you're, when you're contributing. Yeah. Uh, did you get Gerard, do you take any, I guess, satisfaction in knowing that you guys got Gerard Gallant hired in New York? Well, yeah, I don't know if we did. <laughs> he might've been hired before, but uh he, he's, he's just like a, I can see why so many guys have loved playing for him. He's just a really, really good guy. Um, you know, he, he's, he's, uh, he's a player's coach for sure. Like, you know, he's, he's not overdoing it with the X's and O's. He kind of lets you play, but he holds you accountable. He, and he's just a, you know, it's, it's easier to take criticism or to take advice from a guy that you just respect as a person. And he's just a, he's a class act. So it was, um, it was a lot of fun playing for him. Uh, final question with the Worlds, then we'll move on. And that is, you got to wear the Canada jersey for the first time. And was there anything special about it? I Like, I just want to, I'm curious of how it felt to put that on. And, and will you frame something like that in the house? Yeah, for sure. I'll frame it. I mean, um, it, was, it was a surreal experience. Tough to put into words uh, how amazing it is to play for your country. You know, I've been on the other side of the fence of being a fan of team Canada, you know, still am, you know, the Olympics or, you know, watching world juniors, it's something that you can still be a fan of, uh, you know, playing in the NHL. It's, you're not a fan of your childhood teams anymore. You're, you're on one. So it, you know, it's always to be a fan of team Canada and uh, to represent your country successfully is, uh, is an amazing feeling.
Yeah. And Brownie, I think I can, that resonates with me too. Cause I remember my first time putting it on. It's the sense of pride you get, right? Like when you put that sweater on and then you're going on the ice for warmups and you know, the other team is thinking, Oh, like here's Canada. Like you're the big bad team in the tournament for me, at least that was the, that was the best part. Like just the pride of having that sweater on. Yeah, absolutely. And that's where, you know, at the beginning of the tournament, we were in 0 and 3. Like we, you know, we all felt that pride of putting, yeah. it, putting it on where it was really like, as much as, you know, as much as it mattered or didn't matter, like in the grand schemes of things, we were really, you know, hurt or, you know, upset that we wanted to, to represent our country successfully. And so I think that's yeah. what made the whole thing sweeter to be able to turn it around and, uh, and to do it, you know, after such a tough start. Yeah. Did you know uh, into the medal round that you guys now had a chance? Could you feel it building that, you know what, we got past the Russians. There's a chance here we can do something. Yeah. I mean, we, we knew the Russians were going to be tough, but you know, especially that first four or five minutes of that Russian game, we were getting dummied and they were just <laughs> buzzing and we we're like, Oh boy. And, and then, um, you know, we had one shift, uh, you know, I felt like our line went out there and we spread the zone. We went low to high and we kind of controlled possession of the, of the puck a little bit. We were kind of beginning of the game. We were a little jittery, throwing it away, um, not making plays. And then once we kind of made plays a couple of shifts in a row, we, we kind of convinced ourselves that we're just as good as this team and if not better. And then we kind of settled in the rest of the game. Yeah. And, and, and the one thing that people don't realize that are watching, unlike Canada, where you guys are all purely volunteers, of course, the Russian players are too. But another thing that people don't always know is that these guys have more compensation. Like, do you guys oh, ever yeah. talk about that where we all know the Russians are going to get paid <laughs> yeah. 100 grand each for winning and they all get a Mercedes? 100%. Like that's, that's something that matters and it, it never seems to gain any traction. No, I mean, well, that's, you know, they, they, their decor, I mean, um, you know, it was an NHL decor. It was a good NHL yeah. decor, you know, Zdorov, Zadzub, Provorov. I mean, they were, they, they had a really good team and, uh, you know, Tarasenko. And you know, Orlov. Uh, yeah, Orlov. Yeah, like they had a, they had a great team and yeah. they and they wanted to win. You could tell how much it meant to them. Like when they, when we beat yeah. them, it, made it that much sweeter, but uh, yeah, yeah they, they, they was, they, they played well. I mean, but once we started to make plays and, and relax a little, the thing about playing the Russians, especially on the big ice is, you know, if you just chip it out of your zone, you might not get the puck back for like two shifts, you know, cause yeah. they spread yeah. it out and they're just all puck possession and controlling it. And so what, but you know, what we do, what they don't do as well as us is defend, you know? So once exactly. we making plays spreading the zone that they, you know, they had trouble defending us and, uh, so, you know, once we settled in, it was, it was, it was, that was such a fun game. What a, what a goal in OT too, by uh, Tony toe drag play that. <laughs> yeah. uh, did Artem Zub yell at you a lot in Russian or did he even make <laughs> eye contact with you? No, he's like the nicest, softest spoken guy. He just said, Hey Brownie, good game. He just, he just, he, and he's such a good player. I, I was trying to avoid him, trying to not get on the ice against him. He, I, he's he really annoying to play against. Really, like he garnered so much attention this year, mostly because nobody knew anything about him, and he just came in and played steady. Like, so if you're his teammate, what is Artem Zub like, not only on the ice but off it? Well, Meth knows like how how important it is to just have a guy that's steady. Like he yeah. he de he defends so well, he moves the puck like really well. I mean. Uh, he's just like a really solid player. And then just a, like, a, he doesn't speak much English. So it's like, you know, you, you don't really have in-depth conversations with him, but you can just tell he's a very good guy, very team first, uh, you know, with the way he plays and his attitude and um, what a find by us. I, like we're lucky to have him. He's a, he's a great guy. Do you play practical jokes on him then? <laughs> not really because we're not sure how he's going to react so <laughs> he could just completely snap what is what does he do what does he do on the plane like when you guys are traveling uh does he play cards with you guys oh or does he God. just sit there and watch russian movies he's hilarious we get on the plane i swear he doesn't even undo the top button of his suit or take his suit jacket off like the guys are all gearing down. Like we got, we got five hours to van and he's it's four hours in, he's got a suit jacket on and his tie done up. <laughs> he's just, I don't know. He's just watching his Russian shows. But he's yeah, a yeah. Beauty. There they do that. We played with Radulov and I played with Radulov and Dallas. Same thing. He does his own thing in the far. He's uh, mind you, he speaks English, but all yeah. the Russians do this. They watch their own TV shows. They're weird. 
like yeah. tacky made TV shows and they keep to themselves into the corner of their plane and they're, they're perfectly content with it. That's why I asked oh, about yeah. too, because he's such a mysterious guy in Ottawa. Like for us, even myself included as fans, we always want to know what he's up to because you never hear him speak. You know, yeah. so, no, I know. Anyway. I, and I, I can't really give much insight of what he's up to other than when he's out there. <laughs> break, he's just being a good guy. <laughs> That's good. You, ta- yeah. you talk about hanging the Jersey in your house. Will you hang a picture of your 2020, 2021 headshot? <laughs> no, that thing's getting burnt. Oh, oh those are brutal. <laughs> like what was that? Like how hard is it to I can put my, I can get better headshots. My iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better about this season than that headshot. Oh my god, uh, the fish eye lens. I need favor. Eye, yeah. I need I need favors already when it comes to headshot, and they did the opposite. <laughs> you had no shoulders. <laughs> no, that was painful. <laughs> um, however, I will that season, as short as it was, must feel like it was a great like you made a comment at the end of the world championships that hockey was fun again, and I'm gonna assume it included this entire season. Now, like, can you maybe expand on what you meant by that? Yeah, I can. Uh, I, I don't. I think the fun portion of hockey for me is to really like contribute, you know. And um, yep. you know, for me, you know, I think that in years I've been getting kind of lulled into um, just playing, you know, what I was classifying as the right way, and to like just doing everything, you know, as far as system and structure, and I, you know. And what's been kind of getting beat down in my game is just the instincts kind of been getting sucked out of my game. And so just this year, just trusting my instincts, you know, believing that I'm going to make the right play with the puck and that, you know, not always worrying about where, where, when I turn it over. And once you kind of let go of that, you know, you just don't turn the puck over. You know, I, I, I'm, you know, I've been in the league long enough where I know where and when to make a play. And so just to kind of let your instincts take over is, uh, something what I've, I've really worked on and the biggest difference between my game this year and years past is, um, you know, just, just getting out of my head a little bit and just kind of staying in the moment, letting playing with instincts and, uh, just playing, you know, and making it fun. Cause a lot of times guys come from junior and have great numbers, but they get penciled in as you're a fourth line or your third line checker or whatever. You scored 128 points one year. I know you're playing with Connor McDavid. You had the, the eerie team lead until Dylan Strom, Took one more point from you than the next year, right? Yeah, but, six like, points in his last game. I, I texted <laughs> Knobloch. I'm like, could you maybe give him a couple less minutes? Like, 35 minutes, six points to break my record. I, I wasn't going to bring that up. Well, I guess I wasn't going to bring that up. Is, um, is it like, do you need to remind yourself of how good you are as a goal scorer and as a scorer to try and, I guess, let those instincts take over? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's hard to kind of find that confidence in yourself. And, you know, I've been lucky with, um, you know, I felt like DJ has seen me play at, at that level. Um, when we were slapping the Jennies around when I was in the O and so, he, you know, <laughs> so I, I think he, it was so nice to have him. He really believes in my offensive side of things. And, um, you know, it, and it's tough for him to really have full belief until he sees me do it. And now once this year I started to do it, uh, night in, night out, and be consistent. Kind of, uh, you know, you do, you do develop a leash, and um, you know the ability to make a mistake, and uh, you know because you're doing lots of good things. And so, um, you know, I think uh, starting to try to earn that leash and to try to play offensively. And I just know myself and my game, and uh, you know, I, I'm not. It's, I'm not going to be a, you know, I'm not going to be making a play at all costs at the far blue line type player. And and you know that's that comes with maturity and being around and understanding what, you know, when and where to make a play. And I, that's, you know, just having the faith that, you know, I know when and where to make a play and to just trust your instincts completely is, uh, has been the biggest difference for me in, in carrying it over from, uh, you know, years past where I feel like I was overthinking things at time, you know, uh, when you are on an eight game goal scoring streak, is it like a pitcher in baseball where nobody talks to you? No, no, it was, the, it was the opposite. Tierney was bringing it up at every single sec, every single possible moment. <laughs> and then I was like, I had no choice. Like when you're, you know, when all the boys are razzing you about how many games, like you got to just go with it. You can't just pretend like it's not happening. You know, so yeah. I was just almost just, just diving right into it. You know, uh, <laughs> fake arrogance about it. So it was, it was a lot of fun that, that goal streak. I mean, it was, I mean, there's a bunch of the goals in there that were just going in for me. If you get eight in a row, you need to get a little lucky. But it was, 
that would, that was kind of good to help develop the confidence. I was going to ask you, like I watched, there are goals. There's one year in the top of the slot and I don't even know if you even hit the puck and it goes in somehow. And I'm like, how many goals of those eight did you oh. during that eight game goal streak? Did you actually think should gone in? I don't know. I haven't, like, I could be, I mean, it, it's tough. It's wild. Like you had, like, I want to say there was three of them, like, in a normal season, they would not have gone in and they, yeah. whatever it was, it just seemed to go in for you. Yeah. That eighth one, like, you know, I shot the puck from the top of the, it was just me and Hellebuck. I shot the puck from the top of the top of the circles and it kind of hit his glove and just went past him. Yes. And I'm just, you know, I'm like, I, I'm yeah. not, I don't exactly have a bomb. I'm not exactly scoring on a Hellebuck <laughs> without a screen from range very often. So that's how, you know, that things were just kind of turning. They're going my way for a bit. So the fake con the fake arrogant Connor Brown skates back to the bench and goes, Absolutely, I scored this, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. What do you expect? <laughs> uh if you uh oh, I meant to who was your first roommate on the road when you played for the Leafs? Like when you were a rookie, who'd you have to it was roommate? Matthews. Me and Matthews are roommates, yeah. Wow. So I, I what's he like as a roommate? He was good. I mean uh he was so young at the time it was just his first year in the league but we, we were goofing off together it, it it was a lot of fun yeah he was a good roommate is, is he a snore or any of that oh no, I, I wish i had some some dirt for you but i don't he was uh honestly i barely remember it squeaky <laughs> yeah he's paying he's paying brownie off right yeah, now yeah 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 i'm still on the payroll yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you talked about not being able to cheer for your boy or your uh, childhood team which was the Leafs and you grew up as a Toronto Maple Leaf you got to play for them how tough is it to forget that alliance or that allegiance once you get dealt to Ottawa um it's not too tough I mean um you know you just get so in, indulged and in, involved in your own team and kind of uh you know what we're trying to accomplish and getting better and better that you almost uh, you, you know you forget about that and yeah. um so it's not that hard to be honest did you have a jersey growing up though yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I did for sure. I Matt Sundin. Yeah, I think I might have had a Darcy Tucker one. <laughs> of course. Yeah. yeah. See, that's why I, I'm like because me and Tucker play so similar. <laughs> oh, clearly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's why I was always curious nails. of what it's like just to forget it. Because I'm, you know, you're probably your room has got books and I don't know whatever lampshades. So I, yeah, is it just tough to try and pack it all up? Like your entire family, I'm assuming, grew up all Leaf fans. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Like my grandpa who's 92, you know, has been a Leaf fan his whole life. And, um, you know, he, so he still watches Leaf game. He's still a Leaf fan. And my dad will get, will chirp him and be like, well, you can't be a fan of Leafs anymore. And he just still, he's been a fan for 90 years. He's not going to not be a fan anymore. So, so it's, uh, I mean, we grew up in Toronto, everyone's a Leaf fan, so that's all right. But, uh, for me personally, I, I know, uh, you know, my, it, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to let go. Uh, if one of the triplets happens to get kicked out of the frat house in Ottawa, that's Brady or Josh or Tim Stutzel and has to live with you, which one of those three are you taking in? Me and Timmy Stutz had pretty good chemistry at the end of the year. So I think I'd maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe take Timmy in. Now, are you, do you call him Timmy or is he Jimmy to you? It's everything. It's Jimmy, <laughs> Stu, Timmy. I don't know. It's, it's pretty much anything. He responds to all of them. Do you feel old at 27 to be on this hockey Oh, team? yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe how old I feel at 27. Our, our card table is honestly, Matt, you'd be upset about it, to be honest. We, <laughs> we have me and Tierney are the old guys, and we're 20, both 27. Bali, <laughs> Dezingle, and then we got Shabby, Brady, Batherson, and Timmy. Wow. And Whitey's in there, too, sometimes. And it's like I, I, the average age is like 22 and a half. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be fun, though, right? Like being, yeah. being in an atmosphere like that, like it's a different kind of team. Like I don't think I've ever been on a team that young. My earlier years in Columbus, maybe a little bit. But like it must feel so much fun in the room. Like there's always guys chirping each other, I feel like. Because it's different when you've got a lot of players that got to go home to their their kids and their wives. Yeah. Like, I feel like you guys, especially once this really opens up, hopefully next year, and you guys are on the road and you can do your dinners and stuff. Like, I feel like your team's going to get even tighter than it already is. For sure. Yeah. I mean, something about kind of growing up and, uh, you know, in the organization together for all those young kids to kind of uh, come up together. And you just feel much more ownership rather than kind of being put right. on a team um you know that's already having success or not having success you know to kind of for a lot of those young guys to come up together and uh, 
kind of change, you know, for all of us trying to change the culture and to change the, um, you know, trajectory of the team. It's, uh, you know, it, it's a lot of fun for that and, you know, a lot of good young guys. So it, it, we'll have a lot of fun next year. We're, we're all looking forward to it. Do you feel like you have all that added, because like, you're only 20, like you're young in, in, in all, you know, sense of purpose, but do you feel that added responsibility now that you're, you know, maybe one of the older guys that you have to take on that leadership role as well? Well, I think I enjoy, you know, I enjoy being uh, a leader. I think um, typically pretty vocal guy, you know, some personalities are, and some people personalities aren't. And I'm typically pretty vocal, um, you know, when it comes to in the room and stuff like that. And, and yeah. you know, I, I, I enjoy it, I'm, but it's pretty easy to be a leader uh, amongst this team. It's so many good guys that are already all in. It's, you know, you're not really convincing yeah. anyone to do anything out of the ordinary. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, and we also have a lot of, uh, other good leaders. And so, you know, we got a good room right now, which is, um, which is very important, obviously. Okay. I, I'm going to ask the question. You were the captain of the Erie Otters. You've worn a letter at the world championships and in Ottawa, should you be the captain of the Ottawa senators? <laughs> you're you're going to so. ask him that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Obviously it'd be an honor, but I think, uh, you know, I think, uh, one of the one of these one of these guys coming up will uh you know wear the C and wear it for a long time. Does it and at the end of the day, does it really matter? And I we've had this conversation a lot. Like that you doesn't. will put a letter on a jersey, usually it's perhaps the best player on the team, and it doesn't necessarily mean it translates into the room. When it comes to this group, I think you could put the C on probably three guys and it wouldn't matter. It would always have the same yeah. leadership group. No, I don't think it matters. You know, I think it's um you know, I, I, you know, as long as, you know, whoever gets to see just, um, you know, stays, just keeps leading the way they have been leading. You know, I, I mean, uh, we have such a good group and, um, you know, we just got to, everyone's just, you know, you just can't let it change you too much. And cause we have a, a solid leadership group, you know, we don't really need um, any one guy to, to really step up above and be all, you know, we just kind of, a lot of, like I said, we already have such a great room where, um, you know, guys hold each other accountable. Guys uh, are really competitive and want to win and want to practice hard, want to do things right. So, um, you know, I, I don't think it really matters. Okay, so you're I got a hard one for you then. So if you're on the road, times are tough because we all know throughout a long 82 game year, you know, season, things are going to go up and down. Let's say you're on the road. It's early. It's Colorado. You should have a day off, but the coach is pissed off and he wants to run a practice. Who's going to stand up for the team then and go in there and tell DJ, listen, man, we need a break. That's a good question. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> I don't mean to put you that, on the spot. At, at that gotta... point, it's whoever gets the chatter. We're going to, cause I, I don't yeah. really want to do that. we'll just send him in. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't sound like the most fun thing to do, but uh, Fair enough. yeah. Fair so enough. whoever, whoever gets to see, I think we'll just, uh, there you go. Yeah, that we'll sounds like oh, everybody would vote for Colin White to go in. Yeah, the whole practice <laughs> oh that's yeah. great yeah, okay. if the travel starts to open up and you can go somewhere and now celebrate your world championship or just to spend time with the fiance where are you going to travel to well i don't know um you know we're getting married in august and so i think we're hoping to go on some sort of bachelor or well bachelor party before but some sort of honeymoon um mm -hmm. So I don't know. We're trying to sort that all out. We got to just wait to see what the government says about travel and everything. Um, hmm. Get our shots, and they, and we'll go from there. Are you are you having a local wedding, or are you hoping to go away to get married? Um, up in Muskoka. Okay, yeah. So local. Yeah, nice. yes, yes, yes. Very so nice. Semi local. Yep. Well, well. Good luck with that. We wish you all the best in in that one. Yeah. And Meth will send you a gift. I promise. Yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> is there uh, any place in Ottawa that you like to go out when you? can and it's not locked down and, and enjoy a good meal where's your favorite place to go yeah i really well really um like matty it's uh you know i, I don't know if you've been there it's on the near west pearl there it's uh i love going there it's probably my favorite restaurant in the city and giovanni's is a great italian spot there too so um those two spots are usually our go-tos nice uh and a couple other questions before we let you go and that is when you played with connor mcdavid in erie uh is it like, and you also played with Austin Matthews. I'm just curious. So all these star players, are you the one big factor of how they've had success? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I really like that answer. You got you to gotta, you gotta own it there. Own yeah. it, Brownie. Well, probably. Yeah. I will. 
I mean, we'll just never know if what would have happened if I didn't play with those guys. So we can just put it that That's way. True. Fair <laughs> enough. Now, do you, do you still talk to McDavid very much? Uh, very uh, scarcely. You know, yeah. after we play him or something, I'll I'll, uh, I'll catch up with him, but um, not 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 that much. He, he's he's a class act, though. That guy's. Uh, I'm, I learned so much, uh, seriously, when I was playing with him in, in Erie, even when he was 15, 16, just by the way he plays and the things he does to create space on the ice and uh, create opportunities for his line mates. And uh, he's an incredible player. Are you cheering for anybody in the Stanley Cup final? And I will uh, preface that by saying Adam Pellick was a teammate of yours and Erie, who uh, was also an alternate captain at the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Honest, to be honest, if I definitely cheer for the Isles, um, Pelly's uh, best buddy of mine, and like, we lived together in Erie, and we actually played together from uh, West Mall Lightning through the Toronto Marlies all the way up, and then drafted to Erie together. Our, uh, both of us are engaged and our fiance is our best friends too. So the ties oh. running pretty deep there uh, yeah. with Pally. And so uh, he's a, I think the whole league's realizing how good of a player he is, uh, you know, especially these last couple playoff runs. He's, um, he's, he's handy. I mean, he's, he's a, he's, he's a backbone of that defenseman and they're, they're a fun team to watch. I like watching that Islander team. So many just solid, good players and they play such a good style of game. Can they beat? I'm going to let's. See, are you going to pick Vegas or Montreal on the other end? If I had to pick, it's tough to say. I mean, anything could happen. Like that's the, the craziest thing about you know NHL playoffs is anything can happen. But I mean, Vegas looked pretty good last night. Yeah. It's tough to. Uh, mm-hmm. So to I I think it's one. going to be a Vegas Islander. Well, I'm hoping because I bet on the Islanders. Uh, so do yeah. you think the can the Islanders beat Vegas? Yeah, I think so. I mean. You know, so much of it comes down to special teams and and goaltending and uh, you know and little things. So I, I mean, I know any if of these four teams, anybody can beat anybody. So it's just yeah. about who who performs the best. Now, do you get jealous of watching the playoffs when you're not in it? For sure, to be honest, okay. yeah, uh, it looks so fun, especially with fans in the stands. Um, you know, playing in the in Team Canada with that atmosphere of like you know must win games and. Uh, you know, just trying to, you know, working so hard within the game, not to overthink like, you know, the moment and just kind of being able to perform at a, you know, I missed that obviously. And I'm hoping that we get back there next year and um, to have those type of big time hockey, those that's, that's when hockey is the most fun. Uh, When I talk about uh, play, what you're doing in the summer, I should say, and that is, I know you've got wedding plans, but what does, what does Connor Brown like to do in the off season when he's not planning a wedding? I golf a lot. Um, you know, I like to head up North. We have a family cottage and a uh, fiance has a place her, her mom has a place um, North of the city as well. So nice. we're usually up there on weekends and then uh, training golf a lot during the week. And so um, not much, everything, a little bit, of everything. <laughs> uh, before we let you go, one of our meth's favorite questions to ask, and that is uh, what is your favorite snack? If you are watching a movie, uh i don't know <laughs> just just answer the question and make Wally happy okay? yeah like popcorn i don't know i like popcorn yeah. it's okay. be, it's an internet sensation question no one can seem to get enough of this question so i just have to i have to ask everybody <laughs> all right yeah popcorn i guess <laughs> that's, that's fair uh Connor, we appreciate your time as always we you know you've always been very good to us so we wish you all the best at the wedding in yeah. august and uh can't wait to see you back on the ice here in this, I guess, in the fall, whenever the season resumes. All right, fellas. Take care. Thanks, Thanks buddy. Brownie. Uh, Matt, another great interview. Uh, Connor Brown has really stepped up his game and he's become, you can see his personality has really started to form and develop over the last couple of years that he's started to get some attention and he starts to feel more comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah, he looks. He, and, I mean, and it, it, it that correlates directly to the World Championships. I mean, it wasn't just a, a one trick pony, if you will, during the Ottawa Senators year that he had here in Ottawa. Uh, he carried that same consistent creative play into the World Championships and was one of the leaders on that team. So I feel like Connor's taking a huge step forward here. A lot of really good things and good takeaways, especially from the interview uh, that we can look forward to into next year. I would clearly bet on him. And speaking of betting, 
Time for On the Points, brought to you by sportsinteraction.com slash Wally and Mathot. Sports Interaction is Canada's odds makers. Uh, log on to sportsinteraction.com slash Wally Mathot today. Get in on the action. Must be 19 years or older. Okay, Meth, this is where we start to say who's going to win. So let's go with Vegas, Montreal, game three. Uh, this switches back to Montreal. I still feel like Vegas is the favorite, but boy, oh boy, the Montreal Canadiens uh, look a little tough. Yeah, and this is one of those picks where I feel like you could just flip a coin at yep. this point and 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 fig. But I mean, if you look at the numbers uh, right now and and just the home ice advantage and the confidence that Montreal's probably gained off that last game and with Petrie back in the lineup, I'd like to see Montreal win this one. And and and, and, and I still think I still think Vegas is the heavy favorite. I'm acknowledging that, but. I can see this being a low scoring game. I can see Montreal really imposing their will on them at home. They're invigorated. They're going to be well rested. They'll have slept in their own beds. I, I, I'm just going to go with Montreal just on a whim here. I think that they've got an advantage playing at home. They get their matchups. They're known as a defensive team. If Carey Price, if Carey Price, excuse me, has a strong game and they are a fairly disciplined team that can control their emotions, especially in that first 10 minutes, I like Montreal. Okay, sh- here's a question we I meant to bring this up earlier. Does sure. Chandler Stevenson make that big an impact in that lineup? And the reason I ask that, Pete DeBoer shuffled his entire lineup because yeah. of Chandler Stevenson being out. And I, so here you are going to the playoffs. You've got lines playing really well. So one player has affected your entire forward group. Well, I mean, it happened with Toronto. Look what happened with Toronto. Tavares gets hurt. And I'm not saying that the series leaned on that specific injury, but I mean, yeah. it's your captain. He's a good player. He's on your top two lines. Stevenson, of course, being on the top line in Vegas. But in any case, it's it does have a trickle-down impact, and the same applies on defense. Everybody's role changes below that line when you have to reinsert a player or shuffle around a little bit. But a team like Vegas, and I don't blame DeBoer for doing that, you have to make adjustments. And as a player, you have to adjust. And it's easy to point the finger and say, well, so-and-so is missing. So, you know, I don't know. I don't have the same chemistry with these two fellas. So I don't know. I'm going to blame my, my lack of production on that. You have to adjust. It's the playoffs. Injuries are prevalent everywhere. Players are playing hurt. So I, that that's a BS excuse. I think at this point it'll have an impact. But when you're a team and you've made it this far, there's no excuses at this point. You have to produce either way. Okay, Matt. It is the Montreal Canes versus the Vegas Golden Knights in game three. What is the score and who is the winner? Oh, I don't like that question. I hate because I hate it because Montreal's they they they've really kind of played out of their minds. Uh, they've elevated themselves to a different kind of level now. So I think you have to make adjustments in your predictions. I still think it's going to be fairly low scoring. I'm going to go with three two Montreal. Okay, uh, Tampa Islanders game four. Does Pager get a point? Do I do I make another bet? Does Pager get me a point? Well. Yeah, they're in Long Island, and uh, again, they have, they've got an opportunity now to come back. I still like the way they played last game. They weren't bad. Um, just Tampa was better. And and again, with Vasilevsky back there, it's hard to really put your money on any over at this point with all the goaltending and the solid goaltending that we're seeing. I still think it's going to be a fairly tight game, especially the way they played their last. Does Pager get a point? He's due, right? I think he's due. So I, I'd, I'd be willing to place a bet on that. I'd be willing to put a little money on Pager kind of product, getting a little bit of production here in this next game. I still think Tampa gets it, though. Tampa Bay Lightning versus New York Islanders game four. What's the score? Ugh. I'm going to copy off that Montreal series and say 3-2 as well. I really do. I mean, we saw their last game, fairly low scoring. Not a lot of penalties. Uh, a team like Tampa relies on their power play. And 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 honestly, and you see the same thing with, with Montreal in that series. Teams are playing pretty disciplined right now. And it's a mixture of that and the refs, as we've all seen. Bit of inconsistency in the officiating, of course. We never really talked about that. I think it's been a bit of a factor, but I think that plays into the whole, um, you know, low scoring in that there isn't a whole lot of special teams. I'm concerned now with all the, um, you know, with all the criticism towards the NHL officiating. Are we going to see a bump up in these calls now? Are they going to start calling some stuff? That's also a possibility that we have to take into factor. All right. Okay. Well, you know what? Then we'll go at the refs right now, or we'll discuss the officiating. And that is, what do you want to see from officials? Consistency. If you're going to call one soft play, call the other. That's it. You know, I'm not okay, going to but- name any spe- any specific place. For me, at this point, there's been such an inconsistency because, as we all know, refs like to put away their whistles in the postseason. Right? Regular season, they'll call every little play. I'd like to see that 
brought into the postseason. I'm an old school guy. Yeah, I do like I like the rough stuff being let go a little bit, but I'm referring to more of the trippings and the interference calls. If you're going to call one play, call the other. The rough stuff, let it go. The pushing and shoving, let it go. That's fine. No one's getting hurt. Let it go. But when it comes to the infractions, as far as interference calls, tripping, uh, you know, slashes, maybe even call those, be firm on it and try to be consistent. So the problem you have is you get different officials all the time. And I'm not even sure you have the same official in the same series ever again. So would you like to see the same four officials ref each game of that series? No, no. I think the standard of where it's at right now. And I do remember but we can criticize our doesn't that give you the want. consistency? No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. I, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that we have, when I say we, I say the NHL has the best officiating in the world, in my opinion, at least yeah. they have, it's literally, and we've spoken on this before. It's, it's one of the hardest jobs of any official. So we got to give them props. It is consistent and it's easy in today's world with a million different cam- camera angles to criticize uh, their job uh, because we have, we can break everything down frame to frame and it's easy to do that when you can go back and check out your replay. Right. But, but in real time with the way the speed is now it's very hard. So we have to understand that as well. The human element is always going to be there in the game and we have to respect it. But I do think that they have been botching some calls with respect to the officiating and that can improve. And I'm sure that's an ever changing thing that has been going on now every day with, you know, with the uh, the head of the officials in the league having these discussions and meetings. Let's just hope it improves because I don't want it to affect the outcome of these next few games. But isn't this always the way? Like, can you remember uh, any Stanley Cup playoff where people weren't complaining about the officiating? It just no, seems it, like that's just the way it is. It is. It is the way it is because it's a sport and it's 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 hard to There's be human incredibly error. consistent. It, the, the human element will always be there, and actually. It, it, to be honest with you, when I'm watching, that almost makes it more exciting. Having that human element, it allows the game to flow better. There's less whistles. And, uh, you know, it, it just makes everything more entertaining. Here we are talking about it. But I also don't want it to dictate the outcome of a series. You want the better team to win. So, again, a little more consistency on some of those soft calls I'd like to see. I don't expect the games to be flawless, but there's certainly some adjustments that need to be made. So do you think it's worse than it's been? No. I don't. I just think right now, more than ever, there's a little more emphasis on it because we have the the technology to be able to follow every small play, more cameras involved. It makes life a little more uh, challenging for the refs. Well, you can't bet on the officiating, but you can go to sportsinteraction.com and bet on a whole bunch of other different things. And that includes Pager will get a point in game four. I'm sure of it. Those are the picks. Now go make yours at sportsinteraction.com slash volume of thought. Sports Interaction providing competitive odds on all sports. Okay, Meth, here it is. This is it. We have talked about Igor Sokolov and how great he has been throughout uh, since he's been on our show. He's, he's been the number one talked about guest I think that we've had. So we reached out to Sharkalov over in Russia to see what was going on. So did some chatting. He said, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll let you know what's going on. So he sent in a video. Um, <laughs> we needed a title. So we came up from Russia with Love presented by nice. Faces Magazine. Here is Igor Sokolov. Hey guys, it's Igor Sokolov here and uh, you know it's just another day in Russia and uh, I'm having a Russian traditional soup it calls borscht. It's really good and I you know I'm really missing that when I'm over in Canada. Yeah, I hope you all guys having a great time off and you know enjoying summer and uh, having a great we- weather, you know lots of tanning and stuff and you know I'm just enjoying time with my family and uh, spend as much time as I can because I haven't been home in two years and uh, you know I just really missed spending time with them and uh, obviously my friends and I got back to training and uh, start going on the ice, going at the gym and uh, you know trying to prepare myself for a new season, uh, for a new challenge and you know just already looking forward to get back into it and uh, you know just here in Russia I've been you know chilling and uh, resting and uh, having a you know massages and stuff like that and uh, just trying to recover and get prepare myself for the next season and uh, you know just you know every day casually my dad makes me that soup and i really really love it and uh, missing it obviously and uh, you know just 
you know, enjoy it as much as I can before I go back to Canada because I'm gonna miss it and hopefully my dad would be able to come over next season and, uh, you know, come to my house and uh, make me some and, you know, I'm just definitely gonna enjoy that and uh, so, yeah, just, uh, I, I hope everyone's staying safe, everyone's staying healthy, it looks like uh, things turning well right now and uh, we're going positive way and uh, hopefully we'll get back to normal as soon as possible and, uh, you know, I can't wait to see everyone in the stands and uh, you know just spend time with the fans in the community and stuff. But for now, until like July 5th ish, I'm here in Russia trying to spend as much time with my parents and you know enjoy, enjoy time with my bodies as well and uh, you know trying to get back to work already and it's been, been two weeks and uh, you know so yeah stay safe everyone enjoy your time off and uh, you know we will talk soon. All right, Craig joins us now. By the way, Craig, I love the opening animation and the music. I thought it was fantastic. By the way, I loved Igor Sokolov. Uh, just an open, honest, and fun kind of guy. Uh, we'll try to continue to get him on. Uh, we just got to figure out the data package between here and Russia because it's a little, <laughs> I'm sure it's going to go through the roof. Uh, that is uh, From Russia with Love, presented by Faces Magazine, facesmag.ca. All kinds of new articles. The newest issue coming out soon. Looks like Nick Paul, by the way, world champion, is going to be in the next issue. Uh, Craig? Well done on the Sokolov video, my friend. Hey, uh, that was one of those where you're like, you gave me the video and you're like, can we do anything with this? I was like, yeah, <laughs> put, it, put it up. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of just built a little fun thing there. So I don't know, hopefully we get some more. I imagine that guy's probably up to some fun stuff in, in Russia. So if we can get a little peek in at that over the summer, I think that'd be fun. I think everyone would like that. So Agreed. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. He's cool. Uh, Connor Brown is a great interview. At, I think he might be one of my favorites that's come on because he really, I felt he opened up uh, the headshot stuff is phenomenal, and I and I really yeah. hope that we can continue to use that perhaps in every show going forward. <laughs> Poor guy. Poor guy. And his got his his probably got the most attention out of everybody because he scored so much. So like yeah. they were constantly yeah. using his headshot and stuff. And it's like, oh, poor guy. <laughs> yeah, oh, that happens uh, sometimes. One thing we need to have a chat with you about. That's the live yeah. show that you conned us into. Are we gonna do yeah. this again on Monday? What do you guys think? I think we should. What do you guys think? You want to do it again? I love I love it. Craig, you're a wizard. That was that was fun. Really good. It was a good call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And shout out to Alex yeah. too. I, right, Alex has kind of been helping yeah, us out Alex. on that side of things because there's no way yeah. I could pull that off by by myself. So uh, <laughs> I was psyched to have him helping out, and yeah, that was great. So yeah. I got a text. I got three texts, but I had my phone off when we do the show, and I look at it later. My son is blowing up my phone saying he can't hear me <laughs> yeah. because the first I don't know how many minutes or whatever is uh, muted, ah. and I had no idea. I could hear Matt though, so I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, my favorite part was when you accidentally had the stream open in another tab, so you were hearing the stream <laughs> from a minute before, also trying oh. to talk live. Like if you if you're watching that at the beginning and you're wondering why <laughs> it looks like Brent has no idea what's happening, it's because him and I are frantically trying to figure out what it was, and it was my fault because I sent you the link so you could see the chat. But yeah, and then I'll I forgot that. So it's on a delay. So I hear I about a minute. Yeah, every. I hear every word I say like two seconds later while I'm trying to speak and continue to hold a thought. So it, I, it was so frustrating. I didn't know what was going on, but anyway, it's, it's all good. Yeah, it worked sort of. Better <laughs> my so it was fun. though. We had a lot of people stop by. So hopefully people just yeah, keep checking fun. it out and we can keep, we gave away some stuff and uh, uh, yeah. So it was yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, Wham live returns Monday. Yeah. We'll figure out what time, probably noon again. That was good, but maybe later. Yep. We'll see. Maybe it's, maybe it's, there's a game Monday, right? Maybe it's the pre pre game. Uh, who knows? Right. We can, we can have a little fun with a lot of little things. So we'll, we'll, we'll chat about it amongst ourselves. Maybe we have, maybe we have a nice beer, a nice white water beer and do it live at like five before a game. Perhaps you know one of these, or maybe we have a morning beer. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. We'll just have live beers. <laughs> whatever the show is we'll just crack them so i think that's good so yeah it was a lot of fun glad you guys had fun with that one too yeah we did we did okay let's do some trivial trivia yeah we got some new stuff to give away we gave, we gave away a gong show sauce off kit when we were live and uh gong show they're the best right they've been hooking us up with a bunch of stuff those hats they put together are dope I don't great know when, company yeah i don't know when we're getting when, when those are for sale yet that's probably the thing <laughs> i get asked about most is when can i buy one of those hats yeah it's so a yeah, work in progress. Yeah, it's a work in progress. Yeah, let's take it slow, right? So, so we're uh, trying to build it up, though. 
So we yeah. like we we want to build up the uh, demand. Demand. That's what. Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. It's business right yeah. there. So this yeah. is the business side of the Wally Mathot show. Look at our hats. <laughs> Eventually, you can buy them. But uh, so what Gong Show did is they hooked us up with a new game. So we're not get, we're not giving a sauce off yet today. They hooked us up uh, with a puck up game set. I don't know if you've seen these before. They're pretty dope. Um, you can take it anywhere. Uh, take it to the cottage, take it to the backyard, take it to a parking lot, take it to your friend's place, whatever. Just don't take it to Brent's house. Cause I imagine he's not great at it. Uh, so if, <laughs> if you do want to score one of these, don't uh, encourage him, Meth. I won't. Yeah. yeah I, well, I haven't seen you shoot a hockey puck. So that, we're going to get one of these maybe. Uh, and maybe <laughs> just like your golf handicap. We'll see if there's a puck luck handicap for Brent it's as well. A, it, there's a severe handicap when it comes to my athletic ability <laughs> well if if you'd like to win one and I, I think you're exempt from this Brent but uh if you know the answer <laughs> to this question from our Connor Brown interview uh Connor Brown set the Erie Otters record for points in the season with 128 which player passed in the following season with 129 points if you know the answer to that uh, head on over to Twitter and tweet it at us using the hashtag Wally and Mathot and be sure to tag our dear friends at gong show gear uh, on Twitter, uh, contest Ooh. closes on Saturday, June nineteenth at midnight. There was uh, there was a question I was tempted to use, mm -hmm. and that was what was Connor Brown's uh, rookie season plus minus. It was, Ooh. but then I was like, he's going to yell at me because it was minus seventy two. Oh, his rookie in, year was minus. Yeah, 72? and I forgot to ask this question. Wow. I'm so mad in the NHL. There's no, no in like, Erie. Oh no, no, no. I was going to say. I think yeah, I heard that it, one. His rookie year in Erie was minus yeah, 72. Robbie Historic was his head coach. Those are Troy Mann numbers right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, if you want to order any Wally Mathot t shirts or mugs, uh, go to Wally shop Uh Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also catch us on all the major podcasting apps. Meth and I are out of here. Craig, uh, you can enjoy a little drink by the pool. Uh, we will see you live on Monday. You're watching the Wally Mathot Show, powered by Barhaven Ford. Let's uh, drive on out of here.